Hello, this video will demonstrate how to increase disk space for your iSIM virtual appliance. Since you cannot increase the disk space for an existing virtual appliance, I'll walk through creating a new virtual machine with additional disk space and importing the snapshot onto the new virtual appliance. In order to create the new virtual machine, you will need an ISO image of the version of iSIM that you are running. So if you're using, say, iSIM 701 Fix Pack 10, you'll need to go to Passport Advantage and download the ISO image for 701.10 and the new virtual machine will replace the existing machine, so you'll be using the same host name and network settings. As always, when making major changes, we recommend backing up, and this includes a VM level backup. Um, so this is the existing appliance that I have. Now this is a machine that I have in the lab, so some of the things may not look exactly like yours. You'll see my active partition is 70112, and the disk space is the minimum. Uh, and so what we're going to go ahead and do is look at the disk space under monitoring, and you'll see right there how much is there. It's roughly just under 50 gigs, so we, I do use the minimum of 100 gigs when creating the original virtual machine. And under cluster status, you'll see loading. That's just something from my lab machine from some of my testing. I'm going to go ahead and bring up PuTTY here, and what I'm going to do is go through and start taking screenshots and writing down some of the information I'm going to need, like the DNS and the network interface interface information. I can see the host name right there is ISIM7VA IBM Local. So I'm writing this all down so that I have a copy of it, and I can easily put it in when I'm creating my new uh, virtual appliance. Now, once I've done this and I've saved off this information, I'm going to go back into the appliance and I'm going to generate a snapshot. And I'm going to need to do this because I'm going to use the snapshot uh, for the new virtual machine that I'm going to be creating. You can put in any comment here. I just put save for new VA. Uh, this does take a little bit of time, not a ton, but I did speed it up a little for the video. Once you see it there, you're going to want to download it locally um, so that you have a copy that you can then apply. And once we do that and you've saved it, we're going to go ahead and go to our ESX server. Now, right now, the machine that I'm working on is that ISIM 7017. It started as a 17. It's now up to 70112. And I'm also gathering all of this information because I'm going to want to create a new virtual machine with the exact same settings. The only thing I'm going to change is the disk space. So again, right now with that 100 gigs, we're going to go ahead and increase that. So I'll go ahead and start the process of creating the new virtual machine. I'm going to want, you can give it any name you'd like, um, and I'm going to want to increase it to, I think I'm going to choose 150 gigabytes just to uh, give a little bit of room. You're going to choose all of your settings. Now, this is very important. With the appliance, you're going to always choose other 2.6 Linux 64-bit. You're going to choose the same amount of NICs, um, so it's three. Again, all the same settings as before. Now here I am going to increase that to 150, though. Uh, I'm also going to go in and make a few other changes to the settings to match my existing um, virtual machine. You'll see for the RAM, I'm only giving it 8 gigs. Again, this is my lab machine. You are going to want to do something appropriate to your environment and match the existing settings. I'm also going to now go in here and select the ISO image that I downloaded. Um, and again, you'll see that it is uh, fixed pack 13. And I'll go in all of that's all set up, so we can go ahead and create this new virtual machine, and then we'll walk through the process of using that ISO to apply the firmware and go through the settings. Now, you'll see I still have the old um, virtual machine running, so the appliance is still running. It's still accessible. Everyone can use that. And it's not until we get to the part where we have to put in the new host name that we're going to need to shut down the old system. 
So here I'm choosing English, typing yes, and I'm starting the process of doing the firmware. Now this takes normally a lot longer. I've again sped this up for the process of the video. Uh, what it says to do right now is to remove the ISO image. So I'm just disconnecting that and then you hit enter and it will reboot the appliance. You can see down there that it removed the ISO and reboots. You can see it's starting to show 70113. I don't know why it pops up that one message, um, but here it goes. And what we're going to do, again, this is sped up for the video. It normally takes a lot longer, but um, when this comes up, we're going to start to go through some of the information here. So the it, since this is a brand new install, the default username password is just going to be admin admin. And as we go in, we are going to change that and set it back to what it previously was. So we're going to go and this is just showing that you can accept the license and you're going to read all that. Um, and once you go through and choose agree again you're going to want to match the same settings so if you did not have FIPS enabled you do not want to enable it here uh, here's where I'm changing the password again the old password is admin because that's the default and I'm putting in the new password that matches my other machine once I do that it's going to come up here and I'm going to move uh, just put an N to get to the next screen. Now here's the key store. I went ahead and generated this again with the same password. I believe that importing the snapshot should uh, put the existing one in place, but I went ahead and did that anyway. Um, and then for the host name, this is where we're going to need to stop the uh, other machine. So we're going to want to do that obviously cleanly. We're not going to want to just go and uh, power it off. So I'm going to go in back to Putty and just shut it down. And then once it's shut down, and you can see in the back that it's shut down there, we're going to want to go ahead and go back to the settings, and we're going to put in that same host name. So again, for my particular instance, it was the ISIM 7 VA. And once you put all of that in, it's going to save it, and you're going to hit in. Again, there, there are some delays when it is applying some of these settings. Um, I've sped sped it up here. For the network interfaces, again, you're going to match the exact same settings. We want to keep it as similar as possible so that from a network standpoint and from an environment standpoint, it looks like the exact same thing. So I'm matching all of the settings that I previously either took a screenshot of or wrote down manually and I'm going to put all of that info in. Now again, if anything went wrong at this point in the process or there were any problems, I could simply shut down this new machine that I'm creating and turn on the old one, and the old one is still completely valid and active. So I'm going through. At this point, it's the DNS, um, setting that up, the same settings. Once that is in, we can choose in for the next screen. And once we get past that, we should be seeing all the different kind of a confirmation of all the settings that we've put in place. And 
Now, again, some of these take a little bit of time because they're applying the different policies. Actually, we're going to need to set up the time as well here. So time zone, for my particular case, I'm going to choose two, which is Los Angeles, and I'm going to make sure that everything matches here. And once you've accepted the configurations, there's the summary, then it's going to apply the changes. It's going to, again, take time, but I sped it up, and it now it is live and active. So I'm going to go to the LMI to finish this part of the setup, and this is where we're going to use the snapshot. Um, so here, admin, we change the password to match the old one, so we can put that in. It's no longer admin, admin. And we're going to choose setup for primary node. Um, so we're going to go and choose the one on the left there. And once that comes up, you'll see that you can choose manage snapshots. And when you choose manage snapshots, what you'll be able to do is um, upload the snapshot that you previously downloaded to your local machine. So you're going to browse to it, select the one that you saved, and then it's going to upload, and you're going to then choose Save Configuration. Now, like I've mentioned, this takes a little bit of time. I've sped it up. Now, once it's shown up, though, you're going to go ahead and select it, and then choose Apply. And you'll see a note saying, hey, this is going to apply it and take discard everything that's there. We're going to choose yes. Now, at this particular moment, what you'll see is that things are slowly loading and slowly coming in place. There's not a very clean way to know that everything's been loaded and that you are good, um, that that entire process is completed. What you're really doing is you're just bringing up that dashboard and you're hitting refresh. And when you first start, you'll see the data store and the directory server are, are not configured. Um, and then it gets to the point where it is. And so I'm checking the performance of the virtual machine and you can actually see that it is running. And once it is all set up, you're going to go ahead and reboot should take about 15 minutes. If you gave it 30, that would be more than enough time. Um, and then you're going to reboot. And once you've rebooted, at this point, you're pretty much done. Um, the entire system, like it, all the settings have been applied. So everything from your directory server to your database, um, all of those settings are in place and um, everything is should be good to go. And I'll go ahead and show you my system here with the, uh, once it finishes booting up, I'll go ahead and not only show you the VA dashboard, but I'll, we'll go into the ISIM console. And I'll show you that that is working as well. And okay, so it's back up. So now I come over again, admin and your password. Once you've done that, comes up. Again, my cluster status is a little odd just because of my lab system. But you'll see everything else has started. You can see the disk space. Um, and actually, let's go ahead and go into monitor and storage. And if you were to compare the two, you can see that there's more space now. Um, since we did increase it from the 100 to 150 uh, gigabytes. And so now that we have that in place, what we can go ahead and do is let's go to the ISIM console and make sure that we can log in because obviously it's going to show that we can connect to LDAP. And so I'm going to go ahead and log in with my Tim Manager. And then once I'm in to 
show that things are working, I'll go ahead and do a password change. So I'll go to Manage Users and then Refresh, and we'll go ahead and choose Brian Goldsmith as a user. Go to Change Password. Uh, it says no accounts for this person. Let me take a quick look and make sure that the issue is actually with the accounts. Um, and if we refresh, we see, okay, so the item service account is actually set to inactive. So let's go ahead and restore that. Again, this fact that we're doing this test, it should show that we have all of the connectivity. Um, so refresh, status is active. So that request went through. So that's a great sign that all the connectivity with the LDAP and database is working properly. So now if we go to change passwords, I'll go ahead and type in a new password. And confirm the password and click Submit, and let's view the request just to make sure that that went through. And if we scroll down, we can see account change right there. We also see that restore account. So at this point, everything is up and running, um, and we're good to go with our new virtual machine, um, and our appliance now has additional information. You can see with the directory server, all the settings are in place. It was all loaded from the snapshot. Same with the database here. So this one, you'd be good to go, and you would have more disk space to work with. Thank you very much.